We're back in the Rathkeel electoral area for this morning's local election debate. Some of the areas involved here are Rathkeel, Askeaton, Croke, Glynn and indeed many other areas besides. Our candidates in the studio this morning are Stephen Keary of Fine Gael and Kevin O'Connor who's an independent. Councillor Michael Mulcair and Joe Wallace of Fianna Fáil, along with Councillor John Sheehan of Fine Gael, were also invited to participate in this particular debate, but were unable to attend. Um, gentlemen, you're very welcome. Good Thank morning you. to you. Thank you, Joe. The first question is, why, considering that neither of you is a member of Limerick County Council, would you wish to be a member of Limerick County Council? And I'll start with Independent Kevin O'Connor. Thank you, Joe. Joe, that's precisely why I stood... Traditionally, as long as I remember voting in Askeaton, going over 12 years now, the choice is always between the two large parties, Fine Gael and Fianna Fáil. I believe that the world has moved on enormously in the last 12 years, and in particularly in the last 12 months, and the two parties no longer represent the opinion of the <coughs> full electorate. So I'm standing to give that element of the electorate that traditionally has not voted, because there is no genuine choice there for them, to offer them a choice. Fianna Fáil and Fine Gael have survived separately uh, for many, many years, for generations, and members of both parties would argue that they have uh, served the population well. That's a great argument, Joe, and if you continue that argument to its ultimate conclusion, you should have won party, because then they would be guaranteed to survive, and they would win every election. Either of those parties would be completely happy to run a one-party system whereby uh, they would be guaranteed election and simply uh, change the personnel every five years. Can you run an effective democracy, particularly a parliamentary democracy, without parties? No, you can't. That is the point I'm making. You need choice. Choice is not going to do us any harm. Choice will do us the world of good. Lack of choice is what has landed us where we are at the moment. But you're standing as an independent, and the question for you is, what can you do as an independent? I'll tell the people the truth. Mm -hmm. I'll tell the people the truth about their local representatives' salaries and expenses, vis-a-vis other jurisdictions in Europe to which we should be similarly um, in line and which sadly we're not. So I will do this. It, it's remarkable that just today in the, the news I heard about um, George Lee drawing back on some remarks he made at the weekend about wishing to abolish the Senate. People on the doorstops have said this to me. George Lee's a highly intelligent man. He's come to this conclusion over the weekend. No, he's drawn back from it simply because he has to obey the party whip. He's a highly intelligent man, as you suggest, who's quite happy to be part of a party, Fine Gael. And now he finds himself spanceled and muzzled. He said a statement at the weekend which he's now withdrawing. Because the party whip has come into play. Stephen Keary of Fine Gael, what about that criticism of the party system by an independent like Kevin? Well, uh, Joe, I would be uh, consider myself a uh, member of Fine Gael, which I've been for almost 30 years now. I would consider myself to be a true Democrat. And I think for democracy to work effectively, you've got to have a party system um, because you would have too much, too much diverse um, opinion with an independent, uh, too many independents involved in any uh, political um, gathering. So I feel while there may be criticism of the, 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 the main party system or the main parties uh, at times, um, you have to have um, a, a sort of unilater unilateral uh, consensus of opinion and the, with, without without a party system you will not have that the argument that uh, independents make is that they have more freedom to choose more freedom to vote their conscience yeah but they don't they don't have um, they don't have um, a mandate from the public to to, uh, to um, demonstrate those those um, type of, of opinions um, they do if they're elected they have the same mandate than any sing other singularly in, in in their own um, pertinent area but not not on, on a national basis or on a county basis. While, while there may be a local issue in, in the Rakhil or, elect or Newcastle area where it may necessitate the... Or but but may, members of parties and those who aren't members of parties get elected for lots of different reasons, sometimes on a singular basis because perhaps they did something for a particular family or group and yet when they're in, they're expected to vote on a whole range of issues, whether they're in parties or not. Right. If, if they want to become part of that uh, grouping within a parliament situation, that's what they've got to do. Such as we have a, a national government at the moment, we have a, you have a, a gathering of, of Greens and you've got a gathering of all the, the various independents. They seem to be working quite well together. Um, uh, from the point of view that 
they're, they're, they're continuing to stay in power for the time being anyway. So, how well would Fine Gael have to do uh, uh, in the Limerick County Council election specifically for it to be deemed a success, considering the party standing in the polls at the moment? Well, at the moment, uh, Joe, we have 13 out of the 15 um, council seats on Limerick County Council that would take a turnover of, of two seats to gain control of the of the um, council, uh, which I think is quite achievable from our point of view. And in doing so, uh, we would be in a power to make the changes that Fine Gael want to make at a uh, local level. What appreciable difference would it make then if Fine Gael had control of Limerick County Council? Well, as we all know, um, over the last number of years, um, Fine Gael have been in power 15 out of 17 years. And, um, is that nationally you're referring nationally, to? Nationally, yes. And uh, I don't quite know, I forget exactly the, since, how long since uh, Fine Gael have held the chair of Limerick County Council, but um, I do believe that every organ of the state at the moment is, is in the control of, of Fianna Fáil, both at local and national level. And to set about a change in, in the mindset of, of, of um, national politics, We've got to start at grassroots. Well, what would Fine Gael do then on Limerick County Council on day one that hasn't been done by what has been a Fianna Fáil controlled council uh, as, form, f as part of a pact with formerly the PD's now independence uh, up to this point? Well, the, the, first, the, the first thing that Fine Gael would do is if I was a, a member of Fine Gael and, and the Limerick County Council, I would set about um, the revision of the existing uh, county development plan, which I would consider should be shredded. Because it is, it's not it's, that document is not in in, in its in its um, content not a workable document for the public. Members of your party, though, were part of the debate that formed the current county development plan. It's not as if you're not represented. Joe, uh, I'm coming here. Joe, you let me just finish. That, I know that, uh, Joe, but uh, as you as you know well, no, we did not have the numerical um, uh, the numbers to to uh, vote against uh, to vote it out and. Uh, uh, its, its content would, in my opinion, is flawed. Kevin O'Connor, Joe, the county development plan is completely aspirational at this point. Can I ask my colleague here now standing, what is the, what is the figure for road spending percentage terms vis-a-vis -vis last year's percentage terms on, na on non-national roads in Limerick? I don't have that figure. The figure is minus 2.5 percent. Yeah. Now, every figure that you look at is that a is minus. That is because it has been cut Correct. centrally. Yes. We are at the mercy of central government. Local county councils get all of their, practically all of their funding now from central government. No matter what happens next year with the budget, the budget for 2010, there are going to be swinging cuts to all county councils. I'm going to say this because I'm an independent. No one's telling me not to say it. There are going to be cuts right across the board. And here's the rub. The cuts are going to affect the small guy, not the big guy, not the guy in Dáil Éireann and not the guy in the county council chamber out beyond. I can say this to you now, Joe. During the year of 2008, during which, during which year, the whole of Ireland suffered massive cuts in real take-home pay. The county councillors gave themselves two rises. Not one, but two. Their pay went up by a net, believe it or not, 5%. Everyone else is taking the pain, and they're taking the gain. That's called the, e that's called the penthouse suite on Easy Street, and that's where these guys love Stephen, to live. Stephen, do you concur with those figures? Well, I, I, I can't disagree with the figures because um, what I would say is that the, 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 the current salary for a county councillor is <coughs> in the region of 16,000 per it's annum. 17,060, including yeah. the rise. Right, okay. respond. Let me finish, please. Um, if you would create that on, on a yearly basis over um, the 12-month period, that would be approximately, if you were to put, you know, which I would consider a minimum uh, input of time into the, into the council work of 20 hours per week, it would be approximately 16 to 17 euro an hour, which is uh, in or about the the, the national um, or the, the average industrial wage for, for uh, an ordinary um, industrial worker. Joel, can I come uh, in on this? Now, let me finish, please. Um, if I feel that for me to be an effective councillor, I would put in a minimum of 20, 25 hours into the, the work of, of a councillor, and I feel that I would really be entitled to 15 or 16 euros. Let Kevin come back on that. That is absolutely not a rubbish, the 17,000 a year divided over uh, the number of hours you work. They get 17,000 a year and 60 euros. It comes in under the tax radar. They don't pay any tax on that unless they already have a job. And all of them have second jobs. Do they not?